Hi, scholars and families. My name is Ms. Hyman. I teach fifth grade humanities, and today I'm going to be reading you a story called Dancing Hands, written by Margarita Engel and Rafael Lopez. They are the same authors who wrote another great story called A Drum Dream Girl. And um, it's just really great to see characters who never stop um, trying and never give up on their dreams and they follow and pursue their passion. So let's get started. When Teresa was a little girl in Venezuela, Mama sang lullabies while Papa showed Teresita how to let her happy hands dance all across the beautiful dark and light keys of a piano. At first, making music seemed magical, but soon Teresa learned that playing a piano could be hard work. Sometimes she had to struggle to make stubborn music behave as she practiced gentle songs that sounded like colorful birds singing in the dark and light branches of a shaded dappled mango tree and powerful songs that roared like prowling jaguars beside towering waterfalls in a mysterious green jungle. So these pictures are great. And they really um, show us what the writers mean when they're using all that figurative language in this story. If Teresa felt sad, music cheered her. And when she was happy, the piano helped her share bursts of joy. By the time she was six, she could write her own songs. And at seven, she performed in the peaceful chapel of a magnificent cathedral playing hymns that shimmered like hummingbirds. There's the cathedral back here that she played in. And she's writing her own songs at six years old. Music was Teresita's delight, but suddenly, when she was eight, a war changed everything. Guns blazed, swords flashed, and poor Papa had to rush the whole family down to the seashore and onto a ship into a storm where wind howled, waves rolled, barrels tumbled, ropes snapped, and clouds bucked and kicked across the wild sky like angry mules. By the time the ship arrived in New York, Teresa felt lost. She was homesick. How could she ever play happy songs again in this unfamiliar country where she did not know a single friend? Few people spoke Spanish and all around her, curious strangers stared and whispered as if her, full, as if her whole family belonged in a museum of oddities. So she's feeling really left out um, here in her new city because her family had to leave um, to get away from the war. Worst of all, there was fighting here too. The horrible civil war, North battling South as soldiers marched and newspaper boys hollered about victories, defeats, funerals, and fears. Without a new piano, Teresa would have felt even more lonely. But soon she discovered that wherever one was, some people are friendly, drawn together by songs. Musicians came, came to her home playing along while they listened to the dazzled notes and her dancing hands. Determined to improve, Teresa practiced great full graceful waltz and sonatas, booming symphonies, and lively folk songs with her strong hands accepting the challenge of life's many dark and light moods. 
So there she is playing again on her new piano. People began to call her the piano girl. Her picture was in the newspaper and on posters advertising concerts where she performed with great orchestras that invited her to play solos. Teresa triumphed in enormous theaters where children clapped and cheered while their parents stood up and threw and tossed roses. So she's getting pretty famous now. With Papa at her side, she traveled to elegant cities. And by the time she was 10, the piano girl grew so famous that she received amazing invitations, including one so special that she could hardly believe her eyes. President Abraham Lincoln wanted her to play for his whole family at the White House. That's super exciting. I don't know, I'd be kind of nervous though. But the country was still at war. So Teresa arrived at, in Washington, D.C. at a time when freed slaves were signing up to be soldiers. The injured moaned, the nurses groaned. From the sheer weariness of caring for so many fevers and wounds, not long ago, president, the president's young son had fallen sick and had died. Men argued about lost battles, battles won, speeches made, victories delayed, and Teresa began to worry. How could music soothe so much trouble? Poor Abraham Lincoln, Teresa hoped that she could entertain the president, his grieving wife, and their two surviving sons. Her fingers stumbled her fingers might stumble, the rhythms emerging too slow or too fast. So you can see Abraham Lincoln up in the window there, feeling very gloomy. And here she comes and she's kind of nervous. She's like, how am I going to, I hope this helps. I hope I can play a song and make him feel a little bit better. But Teresa was brave and she believed in trying her best. So, she entered the White House silently, clutching Papa's hand fiercely as they stepped into a room so red that it looked like a storm or a sunrise. Vanessa remembered how it felt to be a homeless refugee and how lonely she had been surrounded by strangers, some of them rude and others kind. The memory of meeting past challenges now helped her fingers dance, celebrating the way life turned out to be a mixture of all sorts of feelings, happy and sad. But the piano was poorly tuned, making her music sound ugly. What should she do? Refuse to play? She stopped, feeling discouraged until Mr. Lincoln smiled kindly and asked her for his favorite song, Listen to the Mockingbird. Teresa knew she could play this lively piece on an imperfect piano. So her fingers leaped across all of the glorious sounds, dark and light keys, improvising, the way mockingbirds do. The melody changing as she went along, music swirled, swirled and soared on the wings of sound. The president listened quietly to the notes that rose and swayed and rippled and dipped like a bird in the blue sky above a green forest. He closed his eyes, nodded his head, stretched his long fingers and tapped the tip of his shiny shoes. So he's really enjoying this song. When the joyful song ended, Abe Lincoln stood up and clapped, smiling at the piano girl who smiled too, because she knew that her music brought comfort to a grieving family, at least for one brief wonderful evening of dancing hands. 
I agree. Sometimes I just, I like to listen to music and it puts me in a better mood. From then on, Teresa felt certain she would always be bold enough to share her musical courage anywhere in the world, simply by letting her fingers travel across all the beautiful, dark and light moments of hope. All right, guys, so thank you for listening and watching um, me read this story. I hope you have a great day.